What's going on guys, Matt here from DCLblogger.com. Um, in this video, I'm going to be trying to explain the, um, the whole concept of decentralization within Decentraland. Decentraland kind of sells itself on the concept of being uh, decentralized at its core. And I know um, a lot of companies in the blockchain space kind of push out the whole decentralization and 100% ownership of your assets and all that kind of stuff. But Decentraland is a little bit more than um, the, you know, the standard these days, which is 100% asset ownership. Yes, that is decentralized. But in terms of the governance and kind of the whole concept of the founders of Decentraland want to remove themselves as a central body and kind of give the whole um, direction of pushing out Decentraland and the concept of it to the community. So what this actually means and how the process actually works. For example, there's a few really interesting points, right? Um, Decentraland at the moment is now currently hosted on distributed servers. So there's no central server that hosts Decentraland. So if Decentraland themselves want to um, kind of take Decentraland offline, they can't do that because there's multiple servers that run the Decentraland, Decentraland um, client. So, um, you know, in that sense, it's decentralized. It's really special already in the sense that it can't be shut down. There's no big red shutdown button for Decentraland. It cannot be shut down. It's been run simultaneously by multiple servers. People that are running them, their servers have been approved by the DAO. Um, and there's a lot more to it, but that's just the base of some of the, some of the stuff that I'll cover. So I'm going to go through exactly what their concept is and their approach for this decentralization is. So they sent out a few articles. This is one of the first ones. Decentraland DAO, explaining what it is, um, stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. It's not a very new term. Um, it's very commonly used in Decentraland, uh, in, in blockchain. Decentraland DAO owns the most part of the most important smart contracts and assets that make up Decentraland. The land contract, the estate contract, wearables, content servers, and the marketplace. So effect effectively what Decentraland have done is given the control of the whole contract of Decentraland, the most important assets. So land contract, um, the estate contract, the wearables contract, the content servers, the whole marketplace. So now currently the Decentraland DAO controls the direction of all of these contracts. So Decentraland as a, as a, as a uh, previously central organization don't have control over these contracts anymore. So the way that these contracts are going to evolve is the process of this DAO. So the DAO itself is compromised by, uh, it, um, is made up of us as the community and the SAB, which is the um, Security Advisory Board. So kind of, I'm going to kind of try and explain this a little bit further. I'm a bit confused over the concept myself, but I think I've got it right. Um, the DAO is supported by the Security Advisory Board. The SAB acts as a guarantor of contract security tasked with the job of providing a swift response to, response to bug reports. The board will be able to quickly upgrade the smart contract implementation of the land and estate contracts and replace it with a bug-free version upon receiving a responsible disclosure bug report. Blah, 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 blah. So it comprises of five members. The board will be made up of several expert entities or individuals initially chosen by the Decentraland team and later appointed by the community. So there's five members of this security advisory board. And these are the guys that will be, you will be having to go through them to propose a change to Decentraland. So if you go to, so previously, like I said before, um, Agora kind of ran the Decentraland polls, right? So if we wanted to make a change in the Decentraland ecosystem, Decentraland themselves had to issue a question um, and issue out different um, options and then we'd have to vote on it. That was off chain, it was quite centralized and the only decentralized part of it was that we had to vote on it as a community. Now bringing it on chain using Aragon, um, the way it works, right, is you can go to voting um, and um, so, so only, like I can click new vote but I don't, I don't think it'll go through, but I think only SAB members can propose a new vote. So if you want to make a change and you have some community backup, you can go to these you can go to these sub members and ask them to send this through the proposal. Send this proposal through. So say you want to have um, a what do you call it? Say you want to have some sort of a land auction, a new land. Say you want new land to be distributed in Decentraland. Okay, it's a big deal, and you want that to be proposed. Then you'd have to go to one of these sub 
um, entities and propose that question and they themselves would have to initiate the vote. Once they make that vote, I believe three out of the five SAB members have to vote yes, at the very least, and there cannot be any no decisions. So this is kind of uh, explained somewhere. Um, I think, I think like if I were to click this, um, click this one. So this is uh, previous votes that have gone through. So catalyst, add a catalyst with the owner. So all this catalyst votes were actually to add nodes or servers or hosts to Decentraland. So all the approved servers are actually um, simultaneous, simultaneous instances of Decentraland running. So if you join Decentraland, you're going to be hosted on a particular server, right? So all of these servers have been added through a vote that have approved yes. So if I were to click on any of these, you can see that the SAB, 100% of them voted yes. So four SAB members. So four out of the four voted yes, and I, and I guess the other one did not vote at all. So as long as there's a no, as long as there's no no votes, um, or zero no votes, then this will go to the community to um, vote on. I believe that's how it works. So now in the future, say again, like if I want to uh, propose more land to be added to Decentraland, I'll have to go to the SAB or some members of it. They will have to approve um, or push through the vote or, or initiate the vote. And then us as a community will have to vote on it. So that's very interesting. And we can kind of, or they can kick themselves out or they can kind of add other people through based on them voting it. So as long as say they want to kick one of the members out, then as long as, you know, they need a 100% yes vote. So out of the five, and a minimum three plus votes. So say three people voted, and three people voted yes, but one person voted no, then that vote would not clear. Okay, so that's that. And this is all on chain on the Ethereum network, I believe. That's just how it, wo that's how it works. Um, and to vote as a community, we got to wrap our tokens. So if you've got a token wrapper, this is not all currently um, activated yet, I believe. I think they're still kind of fine tuning a few things, but this is how it's going to be. Um, you have to go to token wrapper and wrap your tokens, uh, which basically just means you're going to change your mana token to this token, and then you can always unwrap it and get your mana back. But basically before a vote starts, you'll have to have um, your token in the system. And then you get to vote and you can all, and then after you vote, you can unwrap it and put it back into an exchange or whatever you want to do. But you will need to wrap your mana before a vote starts to be able to vote on the matter. So this kind of stops people from, um, you know, once a vote is initiated, it stops people from going to an exchange, buying more and adding it to the, to the vote, right? So before you even start, you know what sort of a pool. I think I think this is going to be public knowledge where you're going to know exactly how much of a pool of mana you're working with um, for that vote. So it's going to be interesting because it stops the whales from kind of just buying up 20 million mana if they're losing the vote and chucking it into the voting, um, you know, putting it into the vote. So that's very interesting. Um, the catalysts here are all servers that have been currently approved by the DAO to run Decentraland. So Decentraland is running on all of these hosted domains. Isn't that interesting? So even if I, even if like eight of these or all of these except for one is somehow removed, then they will then Decentraland will continue to run. So this is what I mean that Decentraland isn't able to at the moment. No one can shut off Decentraland. It just runs. It's all multi-server operational. It is extremely interesting interesting in that sense. Um, so that's voting and I've gone through the servers and the, the method of voting. Um, let's kind of go through the, the fine details. So what kinds of things can you determine using the DAO? So upgrading land and estate to add more features and protocol upgrades, uh, specifics and dates for future uh, land auctions. So previously we all kind of have to talk about this as a community and then kind of pester Arya and Esteban about it until they add the vote, right? So now we will signal it using Aragon. Um, size of marketplace fees, primary sales fees, blah, 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 blah. Basically, the direction we want Decentraland to go. We will be also approving um, people, you know, people or artists that want to be official NFT creators or official wearable creators through the DAO. So you will have to be 
um, an official license, not license, but you'll have to be approved by everyone to be able to create NFT. So it's not as simple as that. So it's gonna be interesting because as a community, we're gonna drive the direction of Decentraland. And it can kind of implode on itself. This, this model has never been, as far as I know, it's never been um, tested or kind of, um, it's never been um, implemented in this sense. I believe Decentraland is the first virtual world that runs on this system. Um, how can SAB members be changed? Members can be changed by the Agor, uh, Aragon DAO. A vote must be started to remove or install a new member. This is an action that will involve the community using MANA. So if they approve it, if the SAB approve it, then it goes to the community and then the community have to vote yes or no. So I'm gonna go through this kind of article here which, which kind of goes through different um, decentralized, decentralized specifics about Decentraland. Um, the one, the first one we kind of went through, policy making. Single points of failure I've, I've touched on briefly, but basically um, Decentraland's infrastructure no longer runs on a single company servers or its contracted cloud providers. To illustrate this point with a popular cultural reference, shutting down the central server of any other virtual world equates to pressing Ready Player One's big red button, a kill switch which would shut down the metaverse at any time. In contrast, all Decentraland content is now hosted and replicated across a network of independent nodes called Catalyst. Um, so that's interesting. Also, as at Decentraland, users chat with each other, see, see each other move, and are able to interact with each other thanks to WebRTC, a peer-to-peer -peer protocol for real-time communication. In order to establish these connections, these nodes help user discover and bootstrap connections to each other. So even the communicating is done peer-to-peer. -peer. So the server, I think there is a server that initiates the connection, but apart from actually signaling the movements, that's all done peer-to-peer. -peer. There's no centralized server that kind of bridges that uh, information or that data. Um, the source code is also public, which isn't really that new um, to many projects. You know, many projects these days have open source codes, but the interesting thing now is that Decentraland with an open source code, is you can make other clients. You can make a VR client if you want. You can create it into the you know, you can have your own VR browser and people can join it and, you know, Decentraland can be VR, not dependent on Decentraland themselves to create that VR experience. So that's very interesting that now, hint, hint, anyone wants to come in and make a VR client, please do so because I want to ju jump in VR ASAP. Ownership of smart contracts, again, like I said, Decent now the DAO kind of owns these smart contracts. Everything will be signaled, run on, even initiated and executed by the DAO. Um... On top of that, I think there's some interesting parts here. Um, DAO allocation. So Decentraland have transferred 220 million mana to the DAO to a multi-sig as a beneficiary. So these tokens will be vested over a 10 year period, period guaranteeing a decade long tenure for what is now one of the largest DAOs in the world. Um, so this mana contribution by Decentraland is to kind of give the community some some money to kind of use to I guess incentivize different different creators and hold their own competitions, and is money allocated to us as a community to use the way we wanted to use it basically. Um, establishment of the Decentraland Foundation. The Decentraland Foundation will be a non-profit independent organ, which will make its own decisions free from the control of its founders and which will foster the decentralization of the network. This will ensure the neutrality of the network. Um, Decentraland has its, the foundation has its own treasury. Yeah, we already went through that. Reducing concentration. They've also burnt 333 million mana as a means to reduce concentration. Um, however, empowering the DAO and foundation does not mean our team will stop contributing to the development of Decentraland. Our involvement will persist not as a central point of reference, but rather as another member of ecosystem that is committed to Decentraland in a manner that is consistent with a decentralized platform. So that's very interesting that Decentraland themselves want to step away from control, but still want to contribute to the whole overall ecosystem as kind of like every other developer, right? They will develop, help build the Decentraland ecosystem along with other projects or big governments, uh, sorry, big companies that might get involved in pushing this the way they want it to be pushed. It's all going to be very interesting. So Decentraland have a lot more to offer in terms of decentralization than just asset ownership. Yeah, that's the basic. 
um, bare bones structure of decentralized organization these, these days. I mean, blockchain is becoming such a common thing that you, you change asset ownership to run on the blockchain and that basically pushes out uh, you know, a decentralization as your marketing angle. But decentralized, I want to be a lot, a lot more than that. Um, from contract ownership to the community to obviously being open source, which isn't really that new, so that's not that big of a selling point. But the fact that um, server hosting is done by approved people by the DAO so that there is no kill switch, not one person can turn off Decentraland. It'll be continuously running. So as long as more people run Decentraland, uh, forever run Decentraland, it will always be up there to be explored. That's quite interesting. Um, uh, governing, so governance for, for, for a big, this is a really big part of the experiment for me. I'll be seeing how this evolves right now. Um, you know, the weight for governance has been land and mana. In different ways I think we need to move to a more kind of uh, structure that gives more balanced weight to everyone so this is all that can be signaled by us as the community to Decentraland to make um, I think we might even be voting on the priority of things so maybe if you know we want to push VR quickly then maybe we can signal that by the DAO and have people vote on whether they want VR ASAP or not so that's all very interesting to me, seeing how decentralization kind of pl plays through. Um, this thing, I really, I, I feel like this needed to be kind of pushed out a little bit more through a video. The article is there. I do suggest you guys to read it and understand it because it's a big part of what makes Decentraland Decentraland. I mean, it is the core structure of it. And I guess Decentraland have come out and said that for the, for the, best, for the best part of three years, this is what they've been working on. So I guess that's why we haven't seen that much progress in the client itself. And only over the last six to eight months have we been seeing some sort of a progress and it's been getting very good pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot to do, obviously, but uh, I mean, like, it's pretty damn good for, for like, you know, one year's worth of work or focus. I feel like this is going to improve in ways that we don't even know yet. Now that the effort can be moved from decentralized structure and framework, you can start, they will start to make, push that effort into... Um, you know, actually creating out the world world and the experience and adding like social features like a friends list, a voice chat, or maybe making it mobile and VR, finishing off the land auction. There's a lot of bunch of things to do. So, yep, that is it, guys. Very interesting to see, um, to kind of learn about decentralization because I didn't really know how in-depth it was from, from this project until uh, they released that article. So hopefully you learned something and uh, let me know in the comments below if you want more more content around this stuff.